So I thought I would break away for just a minute from my uh, conversations about religion and politics and talk about something else uh, just a little bit because I watched a video, well I read an article first and I'll link both the article and the video in the description box, but, but this video it really got me to thinking about something and I think this is a worthwhile thing to examine critically as uh, consumers and as a country and, and just uh, a group of free-thinking people. <laughs> Are video games art? My answer is yes. Unequivocally, yes, they are art. They are artistic and they are about artistic expression. Now let me explain why. The, the, the video I'm linking to has a woman by the name of Kelly Santiago. She's talking about this idea in greater detail and she says that Video games have become art and are and they're uh, they're, they're, they're infancy stages. I respectfully disagree. She presented a very good case and her video was very well done, but I think she kind of missed the mark a little bit. Let me explain why. Video games started out well. She says that. They're just now reaching the point where they can become these great emotional catharsis for people, where they're just now able to reach people on an emotional level. I extremely disagree. I believe for a long time, video games were more than just simple expressions. I believe they were actually quite deep. Not all, and very few as a matter of fact are the early ones, but I believe there were some present evidence and I'll have a trailer for it because, you know, I don't want to do much more than that because if you haven't played it, I recommend you should. Uh, Silent Hill 2 is my evidence. This game was made, uh, shit, the uh, date it was made eludes me. Maybe I'll get back to you on that, but it was a very old game for the PlayStation 2. So the original Silent Hill for PlayStation 1 was art in and of itself. It was incredible about a father trying to find his daughter and becoming involved in events bigger than himself where he's just trying to get his kid and get out of a town which has come under the attack of evil forces which they don't fully understand but he's also working to stop horrible things from happening to his child. In Silent Hill 2, it picks up the idea of this town where it's a man who is coming into his town to find his wife. His wife has supposedly been dead for some time, for a number of years, and he, but he received a letter from her telling him that she would be in Silent Hill. And you, he goes back to Silent Hill and over time he, he gets involved, like the father, in forces of evil that had entered this town and became part of this horrible, all these events that were going on in Silent Hill. And he gradually begins to realize that the monsters in Silent Hill are reflections of the guilt in his subconscious. And you get a great catharsis when he finally realizes that not only was his wife dead, he had killed her. You never saw it coming, that he had been the one to kill her. That the illness that she had, he believed himself to be putting her out of her misery, but his conscience had been torturing him. And so the creatures in the town and the evil forces in Silent Hill were also torturing him. It was very smart, very good gaming. And a lot of games like that are becoming these huge catharsises for people. There is the tragedy of Titus in Final Fantasy X where he is deliberately working to destroy his own existence in order to save this place that he's come to care about and the people inside of it. There is the tragedy of L.A. Noir of Cole Phelps who is trying to redeem himself from a perceived failure that he never forgave himself for in the past. There is the tragedy of Bioshock 2 where a big daddy was so bonded to this, his little sister that he's willing to die for her and does die for her. And she takes him into herself, his memories, his mind, and keeps him with her. 
there is a lot of catharsis here that a lot of people just don't seem to understand. And I would argue that Santiago is not looking at the totality of the field of every single element and that all of the elements could be part and that I believe are part of this whole which says that games are indeed a form of artistic expression. My little rant, I'll have the video by uh, Kelly Santiago and I will also have the article where Roger Ebert believes they cannot be. His arguments, uh, I think they come from a place of bias due to his love of the film media. So that's my video for today. My name is Lucian Maverick. Peace out and may God be less.